a nice fabric tape measure, a, a speed square, a china marker or a wax pencil, um, just some denatured alcohol, a uh, small little level, and then, of course, because we're doing metal, we're going to be using some Surmark um, LMM 6000 here. So uh, just to do a little bit of a prep work here. Um, the first thing that I would, I would recommend doing is kind of measuring out, uh, finding, finding your working area of always. Um, that's kind of where your uh, little fabric tape measure will come at. Um, if you're doing something with like a logo, we're doing some Arctic cups here today. Um, and so you kind of want to measure out, make sure that you're centered in here. Uh, this image here is about an inch and a half, so I've got it uh, sitting about three quarters of an inch on the center mark there. And so what I do typically when I'm setting one of these up for the first time um, is I actually use my speed square here. Um, to set up straight here. And I kind of just like to make a mark running right down. What this does is help ensure that my rotary tool um, is nice and straight, so our image doesn't come out as skewed at all or a little bit crooked. Um, after I do that, what I like to do is just go ahead and line up my rotary tool. Um, I've already kind of done a few of those steps ahead of time just to save a little bit of time here. So what we're going to want to do next is before you add in your surmark here, um, I always recommend when you're working with metal is to take some denatured alcohol, uh, maybe a little bit of paper towel, um, and clean your, your metal here. What that's going to do, that's going to get off any kind of oils, greases, things like that. They may have an effect on our engraving. These things kind of the side here. Um, and then once you uh, actually have your, your tumbler inside the machine, uh, you make sure you're nice and straight. You can actually just use a, uh, the magic eraser here, and you can actually just wipe that china marker right off clean. So uh, now that we've covered kind of all that stuff there, what we're going to do, we'll just go ahead and jump in and let's take a look at our image here. So the image I kind of got picked out for us here is just kind of a kind of cute one, a boy with his dog here. And so we're going to go through and we're going to kind of isolate around this image, clean it up a little bit, and then process it through Photograve. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. And we're going to go ahead and jump into our Corel Photo Paint. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Get Started. I'm going to do a new document here. As always, we're going to go ahead and name this. Um, we'll just call this Photo on Tumblr. All right, we're going to come down to background color. Uh, now, because we're putting this on stainless steel, I'm actually going to use a white background. And I'm going to come down, and I'm going to switch my sizes here to inches. And I'm going to do my width. Um, this is a nice 30-ounce tumbler, so I could probably get about a 6-inch image on that. And then height-wise, we're going to do 3 inches. Um, my resolution, I'm going to leave at 150 because it is a photo. and. Uh, that's typically where I like to run all my photos at, is 150 DPI. Go ahead and hit OK. And bring that in. So next what we're going to do is go ahead and import in our image. So we're going to go to File and Import. Uh, we're looking on our desktop. And here we go here come in and drop it in. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And as you can see, our image is a lot bigger than our working area. So we can come up to the corner here, and we can click and drag this down so we maintain our ratio. And I'm just going to kind of bring it in with my working area here. Zoom in. So as always, what we're going to do is we're going to take our image here, double click, a little bit of a freeze up here, there we go, and call this our original, or as, as I like to do, just call it my OG. I'm going to go ahead and right click, duplicate this, 
And then I'm going to find my view, and I'm going to turn that off. So then I'm working with just my, my image here. Double click that, and we'll call that our cutout. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I've got my cutout layer selected. And I'm going to come up to Image and Cutout Lab. So I'm just going to real quickly trace around this area here. Got a little squirrely there, so we'll grab our eraser tool. Now we may have covered this in some of our other photo processing videos here, but even when you have a photo that's flat on the bottom, like where they're cut off at, you still want to make sure that you're circling around that. Uh, we want this to be a complete enclosure here. So when we come up to the top right here and grab our fill tool, we can fill in the part that we're going to keep. Go ahead and hit OK. And there's our cutout. So the next thing we want to do is come through. and We're just going to kind of clean up these edges. As always, I've got my marquee on so I can see where the edge of my photo is. Uh, to turn that on and off, up here at the top, this little icon here, object marquee, is where we can toggle that on and off. So I'm going to go ahead, come over to my left hand side toolbar. I'm going to grab my eraser tool. And I've already got my nib pre-selected. Uh, I always like using the shadow one. That is just a personal preference there. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to make my nib a little bit smaller. And what I'm doing here to quickly adjust this nib is I'm holding down my shift key along with my left mouse key and then just moving my left mouse frontwards and backwards. All right, start on the edge here. up around our hair. Now he's got a little bit of some spiky hair going on here, so I'm just going to kind of clean up close to it, and then we're going to circle back to that and clean that up just a little bit more. Remember, too, that when you're cleaning up, you always want to let up off your mouse. Um, what you're doing, every time you let up off your mouse, you're creating little kind of mini save points. So if you happen to dip into the photo like so, if you click undo, it's going to undo since the last time you let up off your mouse. Uh, nothing worse than going through and cleaning up an entire image and then doing that at the very end and then having to do everything all over again. Zoom in a little bit here, work on getting in a little bit closer. Nib just a tad bit bigger for more area here. Now, something like this here, where we've got that small little whisker at with the dog, um, those are oftentimes like little, some minute details um, that's not overly important to our photo here. 
So we're just going to kind of get rid of that. Dipped a little bit in there, back up a little bit. All right, we're going to make our nib just a little bit smaller here. Zoom in, and we're going to kind of get in between here. Oops, a little too small there. Kind of in between the two here. And we got our small nib. We'll go ahead and Come in between the noses here. And smooth out these lines just ever so slightly. So now we're going to kind of get into the hair here, and this, this can be a little bit of a trickier part here. So I'm going to make sure I get most of my outside. And if we cut off just a little bit, that'll be all right. Then really what I want to do is I kind of want to make my nib a little bit smaller, and I'm going to kind of, kind of come in here and clean a little bit of this up. Not going to worry about little small areas like this. That's not going to take away from our entire photo, but we definitely want to get some of this spikiness in here. Actually, I may just go ahead and cut some of that off just like so. Now, when you're using the eraser tool also, I find it sometimes easier just to, instead of clicking and dragging, just kind of coming in and doing some small little clicks in there. I'm going to leave some of that background back there. It'll kind of help with our hair standing out just a little bit. Again, I just want to kind of give the, the simulation there. All right. We could probably spend a lot of time on that here, there, but for today's example, I think that should suffice there. Just 
double check our image where we need to clean up at. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my pick tool over in the left-hand side toolbar. I'm go ahead and expand this up as much as I can to fill this area here. Now, when you're doing photos in photo paint, remember too that we will only take what is inside the working area. So we can kind of see down here at the bottom where our photo kind of extends down below. Um, I'm just going to go to keep going because really the, the facers are kind of what we're, we're looking to keep there. Uh, kind of similar to that. So next I'm going to go ahead and come over to my right hand side docker for my uh, align and distribute. If you don't have this docker here, um, you can simply click the plus sign down here in the bottom and add it, or you can come up to window, down to dockers, and then add it in this way as well. Uh, we're going to go ahead and shift it over. And got those hands down there, so that's kind of shifting our photo up a little bit more. So I'm going to bring it down. There we go. If we had a little bit extra, that's okay. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come up to adjust and I'm going to use my tone curve here. Go ahead and reset that. I'm going to make it just a smidge darker. Just going to help bring out some of that detail there. I'm actually going to grab a secondary point here. Try to balance it up a little bit. There we go. All right. And then, typically, especially with dogs and things like that, um, I normally like to use my, my sharpening tool just to kind of bring out a little bit more detail in the hair or the fur here. So again, I'm going to come over to my left-hand side toolbar, and I'm going to grab my effects tool. That's the one that kind of looks like a Q-tip there. And I've already got my large soften uh, sharpen, but if I do need to change that, I can hit this little drop box on the top left here, and then I've got a bunch of different options through here. We're going to select our large shot or our large soft sharpen, and then I'm just going to kind of sharpen up and around the edges here. We can kind of see that hair coming out a little bit more. And uh, I've had this question before about, uh, you know, how to look for detail, things to bring out in the photograph. Um, especially when you're dealing with, with young people, um, you know, they, they haven't really been around as long as some of us have that to develop some of those facial features like, you know, crow's feet, smiles, lines, things like that. Um, so working with like hair and clothing, um, anything like that will kind of help the photo come together. A little bit in the eye here. And we're gonna sharpen up our pup here. Don't wanna go too crazy. All right. We're going to go ahead and save our image to file, save as, our desktop. All right. That save file is just for us to come back and do more work if we need to. Open up a little bit there. All right. So now let's go ahead and export that out. So we're going to go up to file and export. We're going to be setting this out as a Windows bitmap or a BMP file here. Export. I'm going to save this as flattened. All right. So let's go ahead and minimize our Corel Photo Paint here. And we're going to open up Photograve. So, Photograve, um, if you've just Starting to watch these videos on, on photo processing. Photograve is a very simple, easy to use program. Um, you basically just kind of work left to right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up our image. 
find our BMP file. I'm going to go ahead and select material. Now we do actually have a surmark setting right here under other. So I'm going to select that and hit OK. Uh, we're going to drop our machine DPI from 200 down to 150 and hit enter. All right. So this is our simulate here. Um, I've also gotten a few questions about like different settings inside here on, um, our, on our adjustments. Um, a lot of times with Photograve, because it is such an intuitive program, you can typically just go through um, and process this without doing much besides changing the DPI. Um, I do want to go ahead and make some adjustments in this, uh, just to kind of showcase how you can actually tweak this in and make this photo a little bit better. So our extent here is actually our edges. So if I bump this up, I'm going to take it kind of from a 5 to an 8. We can kind of see around this area here, I'll zoom in, how that is changing. So when I switch it from a, back to a 5 and back to an 8. Now with that extent, you don't want to go too high, something crazy like a 25. Because then you can see we get kind of really like blurry kind of look there. Back to a five here. And then density. Uh, your density and noise gain, um, what that kind of does is add in some different um, dots into some of the darker areas. So again, if we kind of zoom into this area here, we can kind of see how that works. So if I add in my noise gain and say take it from a zero to a 15, we can kind of see how these shift around a little bit. So again, what we're kind of paying attention to these dots. I don't use a lot of noise gain um, in a lot of my files. Uh, again, you go a little bit too much, you can get a really kind of fuzzy look out of it. Um, but my density here, I am going to change this size to fit here. And I'm actually going to kind of lower this down a little bit. So I'm going to take it from a 25 down to a 15. And we can kind of see how that's dropping a little bit of that brightness on there. Um, we're picking up a little bit more of that shadow line down through there. I dropped it down a little bit further to a five. Come up just a tad bit more. So maybe about an eight. So something kind of soft like that. So I'm going to go on my left hand side at the top here in this O, G, E, and S. And I'm going to look at my original and just kind of compare it to my simulate over here. So we see a lot of good detail here, detail in the hair. Kind of here, it's where it's a little bit darker, kind of hard to see those strands, but we really start seeing it there. Um, we've got that spiky hair. Um, and even our dog here, we see a lot of the fur, our eyes standing out really nicely. Even our dog bones in the collar here are standing out very nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and go back up to my top menu bar here, and I'm going to click on Final Process. And then we're going to go ahead and save our image. We want it to be an engraved image. And we're going to put this right on our desktop. And because I already sent this out as a BMP file, I don't need to change the save as type. And we can see now on our file name where it says photo tumbler, and then this ENGR next to it, letting us know that that's our engravable file. So go ahead and hit save here. All right, so now let's go ahead and jump in into RDWorks. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that your rotary tool is turned on. Um, to turn our rotary tool on, what you're going to do is you're going to come over here to the right-hand side to where these tabs are. We're going to select User, and I've already got Other selected here. I've already gone through and actually engaged my rotary tool. Um, but if you have not done this, what you're going to do, you're going to want to make sure the machine is powered on. You would then click on read. Oop, a little connection issue. Uh, oh, I came unplugged here. There we go. 
All right, so we'd click on read. We would then go over here to enable row aiding, and we would switch that from yes to no, or no to yes. And then go ahead and click on write. From this standpoint here, this is when you're actually going to want to go up to your machine. Um, you're going to go ahead and power the machine off and hook up your rotary tool. Um, if you're using one of our larger machines, there's a toggle switch on the right-hand side that you're just going to go ahead and flip, um, and then power back on. Um, now, typically with the rotary tool, it takes a little bit longer to reset than normal flat work. Um, please be a little bit patient with that and let that fully reset um, before you, you proceed on. Um, what can happen if you don't let that reset fully is the machine can get a little confused on where it's at as far as its Y axis, because that is what we're plugging into. Um, so you can get certain errors like a Y slop over error, not enough extend space, things like that. Um, part of the reason that's taken a little bit longer to reset is that when we're doing with flat work and our machine resets back to the back left hand corner, it's actually finding our limiter switches and finding its zero, zero mark. Now with the rotary tool that doesn't have a limiter switch on it um, for our Y axis. And so basically it keeps looking for that limiter switch and once it can't find it, it finally just says, okay, I'm gonna give up and go to my last known origin positioning. Um, so from here, we're gonna go ahead and select our work tab and let's import in our image. Go to file and import. Desktop. All right. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and rotate my image 90 degrees. So I'm going to come up to the top here and I'll rotate to 90 degrees. I'm going to double check my origin, which I've already got it set here to left center. If you need to change that, you can come up to config, system settings, and then right here in your laser head. Um, now, as far as origin or laser head positioning, um, this is, again, a, just a user preference. My preference is the, the left center, but any one of these center marks would more than uh, sufficient. Exit out of that. And then I'm going to go ahead and double click on my mode here. Um, we're using the rotary tool, so I'm going to go, uh, again, my preference, I'd like to go a little bit slower, so I'm going to be running a 10 speed. Um, and because we're using Streamark, I'm going a little bit higher power than I would with powder coating. Um, what, we want that power to be a little bit higher because we really want to bond that, that Streamark to the metal. Um, if you go too light of power, uh, that's just going to wipe right off on you. Um, you don't want to go super high with this either because you can get an overburn with this. Um, so I typically find anywhere from like a 65 to 75 power range on our larger machines works really well. Hit OK here, and we're going to go ahead and download our image. All right. So now let's go ahead and jump over to our machine, and let's get things set up. Trip again, things again here. <laughs> So I've actually went ahead and um, I have another one of these tumblers, tumblers that I went ahead and encoded with Surmark ahead of time. Um, now before I, I coat this with Surmark, what you're going to want to actually do is set your tumbler up and check focus first. That way you're not scraping off any of these, this paint or anything like that. Um, with Surmark 2, you don't need a heavy hand on this, um, just a light even coating on this, um, and then just let it dry. If you're a little bit impatient, kind of like how I am at times, um, if you've got a blow dryer or a, or a fan or anything like that, you can hit it with a little bit of heat just to help speed that up. Does not take very long to dry it all, though. Um, so with my uncoated uh, tumbler here, I'm going to go ahead and put that in, and we're going to check out focus here. So I got that in, and actually what we're going to be using today is I've actually switched out our lens. So instead of our standard two-inch lens, I'm actually going to use my inch and a half lens. Um, just because this file is a little bit, or the photo is a little bit smaller, um, it's got a lot of good detail, I really want that fine beam. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my focus stick here, and we're going to go ahead and hit our ZU button. 
And our first option here is Z move. I'm going to use my right arrow key here just to start bringing up. All right. I'm going to go ahead and hit my escape key to get control of my laser head again. And I'm going to move it to the right hand side. I'm going to double check focus here. And then if we need to adjust our focus here on the right hand side, we're actually going to adjust our scissor lift and here. Let's double check that. We're looking pretty good. All right. Go ahead and move my laser head buck out of the way. And let's put in our coated tumbler here. back over. Make sure we're lined up. Edge. So now that I've got it set to my left center position, I'm going to go ahead and hit my origin button. Now, um, again, one of the user preferences, things that I like to do, is with my rotary tool, sometimes it spins and frames out a little bit too quick. So if we want to slow that down, if we actually come here to our speed button, we're going to press that, and we see our speed. I've got mine currently set for 185. I'm going to use my arrow keys to arrow over to my 1. I'm going to arrow down, and then just hit my enter key. What that's going to do is that's going to slow down both my keying and my framing. Um, this is a great uh, tip or trick to use, um, especially if you're using something that's uh, lightweight, say like a, a wine glass, champagne flute, something along those lines. Um, go ahead and hit my origin button just one more time to reconfirm. And then we'll go ahead and hit our frame button. And so we see how that's nice and smooth. And I do see a little bit of shifting there. Whoa. About my camera here. So I am going to kind of move this in just a little bit and bring my back end in a tad. that back down. Now you do want this to be just a tad bit loose. You don't want to pinch that in too tight. Um, what that can do is that can actually bind up this humbler and it's not going to rotate properly. So now we've made that adjustment. We're going to go ahead and hit frame one more time. And that's looking pretty good there. So we're going to go ahead and close our lid sure I don't bump my camera again here. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and hit our start button here. So that's going to take probably uh, about five minutes uh, to engrave here. So while that's engraving, I'll jump over to our computer here and we'll answer any questions that we may have. Oh, again, I hope everyone's having a fantastic day today. See everyone checking in from Quebec to Oregon to Texas. I love seeing that. And Frank, Frank, I'm really looking forward to meeting you next week, buddy. Uh, just so everybody knows, um, we are going to be a little bit of a hiatus for the next uh, couple of weeks here uh, while we travel down to LaserCon. Um, I'm going to be down there. Um, as you guys can see, i got my hair cut, beard all trimmed up, trying to look pretty for everybody. Um, so I'm ho really hoping to be able to meet everybody down there face to face. And so, yeah, if you guys have any questions over any of this so far, uh, you know, go ahead and fire away. Uh, yeah, Frank, uh, Frank's asking a question, probably need 100% power. Yeah, because I think you do have the 2616, if I'm, I'm correct. So, yeah, that is a little bit lower wattage of a machine, so you are going to want that in. Now, if we look inside here, okay, I do want to point this out. Now, this looks like a gigantic shadow, okay? Um, once, once we wipe the Surmark off, um, we're going to actually have our image. This is a very typical look when you're working with Surmark there. Um, I got Lisa asking here, um, how does a, okay, let me back up here. Is there, I have Michelle asking, is there a white Surmark? 
Um, so CertMark does offer a lot of variety of different kinds of colors and things like that. The application process can be a little bit different. Um, I don't believe that they have like an actual white. Um, I know at one point in time they had like blues and reds. Um, I, I'm more of a fan of the uh, LMM6000, just the black CertMark. Um, I have the best results and the most consistent results for that. Um, I've had someone else asking about how they come out on Polar Camels. Um, same exact process. Um, the tumblers may vary um, slightly, and I am going to have a later video on doing like the powder coated ones. Um, I thought we'd just start off with a little bit simpler thing and just do the, the stainless steel ones here. Um, and somebody asked about, about tape, um, and could it be used instead of the Surmark? Um, or are you, if you're asking about the Surmark tape, um, that is an option there. Um, I have had some mixed results with the different types of Surmark out there. Um, again, I found that, find the LMM6000 uh, the most consistent, um, and I always have really nice results with that. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Michelle, I misunderstood your question there. Um, yeah, it actually is kind of like a greenest kind of tent that, that sprays out there once it dries. Um, but then again, you can kind of see inside there that as soon as the laser hits, it turns into that nice black color. Yeah, we're moving along here pretty nicely. Somebody asked me if I've tried uh, Brilliant brand. Um, no, I haven't. Uh, but I, I'll definitely look into something like that. Um, I have tried a few different types. Um, I know there's been like dry molly lube has been a suggestion. I know years ago we, we tried some of that. Um, and that, that did work and it's really inexpensive. You don't really get that big, that nice black look out of it though. Um, it's kind of like a dollish gray. But it's not like our tumbler's done here, so I'm gonna jump over to that. All right. Go ahead and take my tumbler out. And I'm actually going to jump over to my sink real quick and wash this off. All right, so this here is actually a little bit darker than we actually kind of wanted here. Um, and we've got plenty of time left here, so I'm actually going to kind of redo this file just a little bit. Um, and as you can see, it didn't take very long to run there. Um, like I said, just a little bit darker. We've got some nice detail here, though, um, coming out of the face and things. Um, so I am going to try to dial down the power a little bit more. I'm going to recoat this real quickly. Um, like I said, we're doing really good on time here. Um, Got my sir mark here. I'm gonna jump back over to my sink here and give it another coating. A little fade down here. I'm going to let that dry real quickly there. And that's drying up here. I'm going to go ahead and readjust my power here a little bit. We're going to go ahead and drop this down to a 65. Uh, 
download here. All right. Get another quick second here in my let this dry fully. All right. So you can kind of see, like I said, I put this in front of a fan. It dries very, very quickly here. Very carefully double check my focus here. All right, let that go through one more time there. All right, and I got somebody asking, what did I spray on it? Uh, that was just my Surmark spray that I was spraying on there. Yes, William is uh, correct here. It is very important to make sure that you shake that very well. Um, I also wouldn't really use a lot of, uh, like, I wouldn't recommend coating it and letting it set overnight. You kind of want to coat it and, and use it. Um, again, watch the thickness as well. You don't need a lot of really heavy, thick coating on there. Progressing pretty good there. Uh, so uh, I've got a great question here. Um, asking about uh, photo editing can be done in Lightburn. So um, that is a yes and no kind of answer there. Um, Lightburn does have the process to mask and does have the, pro the ability to dither, um, but there's no real uh, tools in there to edit the photo at all. So there's no way to go through and isolate an image like we did or to sharpen it up at all. Um, it, it just, it's more or less of a vector type program that does do photos. Like I said, dithering is, is similar. Um, I do find Photograve a lot easier to use, um, a little bit more straightforward based off of materials and settings and whatnot. Um, having somebody ask, you uh, have to make sure that you're lined up perfectly when going over it. Uh, yeah, that's part of the reason that I normally recommend like focusing and, and, and making sure that, that your tumblers in there straight um, before actually coating it. Um, once you kind of have that straight, you can pull that out, code it, slide your tumbler back in and, and be able to hit start and, and run with it. Um, so very good question here. Somebody's asking um, if I'd gone over it, the same image without the spray, if that had removed it at all. Um, unfortunately, no. Once uh, the laser hits the Surmark, it's going to permanently bond that paint to the metal there. Uh, so unless you're kind of sandblasting it or, or finding some way to, to scrape that off, um, it, is, it is kind of stuck right on there. <laughs> Look like we're just about finished here. All right, 
I'm going to go ahead and jump over to my machine and clean this off again. All right, a lot better results now with a little less power there. Let's take a look at what we have here. So you can see that, uh, again, we got a lot, lot better results there. I know we got a little bit of a, of a shine there, but it, it's really with the, the speed and power, why that comes in, into so much play there. Um, you can see me just dropping the power down it, it's a night and day difference between the image that we got here. Compared to where we went a little bit too high power, we had some detail, but we kind of just washed that out there. And kind of set that up there. Uh, yes, uh, William, William is correct here. The lasering is the easy part. It's the setting it up that's a little bit trickier part there. But overall, I think we got some great detail here. Um, our dog looks good. Our, our gentleman here looks good. Uh, I mean, we had a great example of like different speed and power settings here. Um, and plus size here, we did not break anything and we did not catch anything on fire today. So we're doing very, very well. <laughs> Um, so I'm having uh, somebody ask, they came in a little bit late with the speed and power settings I was using. Um, I actually, uh, the first go around, we did a 10 speed, 75 power. Um, the second pass, I gave us a lot better results here. Um, we did a 10 speed, 65 power. Now, um, I do want to show you real quickly, I've had this um, asked a couple times, of what do we do with these speed and power settings once we have them dialed in. So I'm going to jump back over to my RD Works program, and I'm going to kind of show you that real quick. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go double click on my speed and power, my mode here. And what we have is we have this parameter library all the way at the top here. So if I click on that, and you can see I've already got some pre-saved ones here. I'm actually going to save this. And we're going to call this Surmark Photo. I can actually use parameter notes here, so we can do stainless steel tumbler settings. So what's nice about this is now that I've got those settings dialed in, I have them saved, is I don't ever have to, to try to remember what I did. I can always go to this parameter library and upload these. Um, let me give you an example of how simple this is. So let's say we were doing flat work, so I'm going back to a 28 speed and uh, let's say 21 power for granite, hit OK. So now we're going to go back to our uh, stainless steel tumbler. I'm going to double click here. And so all I have to do is come here to this parameter library, click the Surmark photo, has my note right down here, and hit load. And then all of my settings are saved right there. Um, now, one, more, one last thing I do want to go over with you guys is how to disconnect your rotary tool. So now that we're done with the rotary tool inside the machine, what we actually want to do is before we power off the machine and remove the rotary tool, we want to first go in the system and tell it that we're, we're done. So I'm going to come back over to my user tab here. If my uh, download menu here is in the way, just bring your cursor up by these lines until you get this double arrow. We're going to drag that down and click on read first. We're going to go from enable rotating from yes to no. I'm going to go ahead and write it. Now it's safe to go ahead and power off the machine um, and disconnect your rotary tool. So uh, we'll go ahead and leave this open. Um, See, we have a few more questions here. 
I've got uh, Woody asking if anybody's ever tried a full wraparound with Surmark. Wondering if Surmark could come off um, when passing over the rotary holes. That, Woody, that is a great and excellent question. Yes, that can happen. Um, especially if you leave that dry a little bit too long, it really kind of has a powdery residue on it. Um, that can get on your wheels and actually cause you to slip. Um, I have been able to, in the past, do a full circumference engraving um, using Surmark. Um, but it's one of those things you just want to take your time with, okay? Um, practice makes perfect, and also that kind of helps with the lower speed power or speed settings that I typically go with, like an eight or ten speed. Um, slowing it down on the the speed at the control panel when you're framing, all of that will help. So. Um, if you guys, uh, we'll leave this open just a couple more minutes to see if anybody else has any more questions here. Um, again, I appreciate you guys all being here. Um, look forward to meeting everybody that's going to be able to attend our LaserCon event. Hopefully you guys kind of find this a little bit informative. Um, like I said, we will be doing another one on doing uh, photographs on powder coated. Um, File setup is kind of very similar, a little bit different, uh, but we're going to be covering that in another day. So if uh, nobody's got any more questions here, um, broken machine. Um, we'll go ahead and close it up. Um, I hope everybody has a fantastic Friday. I hope you have an even better weekend. Um, until we meet again um, in a couple of weeks, uh, we'll see you guys. Bye, everybody. <laughs>